Certainly to Marie's Fibco Family Services, it incorporated families. You've heard from many of us, and uh, she was extremely special. And then, because she was a part of the Fibco Family Services, she became a part of the FIBC family in a very special way, especially the seasoned saints who were here. We thank God for them. I cannot help but to smile when I reflect in living color the awesome Marie Fontaine Davis and her smile. There was, she had more, there was a smile that she had in greeting so many of us that that touched the very depth of our being and no matter what was going on or going wrong with us, when Marie smiled at us and greeted us, we would often greet in the main lobby or in the hallway right out there, yeah. especially on Wednesdays after noonday Bible study. I didn't know she had all those vegetables in there for her. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad that you all finally came out of her adventure. But... Um, she prepared those wonderful, tasty, and, and mostly healthy lunches for those. So many things that became so popular, they had to put a sign, 55 and older. <laughs> everybody, everybody became an honorary senior citizen. <laughs> Not just honorary vegetarian, everybody on Wednesday became an honorary senior citizen. They had to put a sign up and say, only for 55 and older. But she would greet me with that big smile and that big hug, and how's my pastor? <laughs> I was my pastor. And uh, of course, you heard Virginia and others talk about she called Karen Mrs. Mrs. Pastor. Mrs. Pastor. <laughs> Mrs. pastor. And, uh, and I'm sure that many of you had your own special greetings that she offered to you and that you received from her. And so uh, we are just so grateful uh, for her life and, and for our Wednesdays. Those of you who don't know about our Wednesdays, and our Wednesdays will never be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who came for a noonday Bible study and prayer, pre noonday prayer, I came after for the exercise program. Uh, we, our Wednesdays are not the same already. Mm -hmm. They are not the same because Marie was not there. But um, And you know, this puzzled me, Virginia and Lisa, because she would greet me with such warmth and such, such love and oh, about how's my pastor that I almost assumed that she was a member but I was puzzled because I never saw her on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, so, and so when, when they told me she died, I had to ask about now, was she, was she a member here? I said, no, she wasn't a member here. But I, I just, I, but I couldn't figure out, I was a pastor on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw her on Sunday. And then I found out she belonged to Church of the Nations. Uh, 
where uh, uh, my colleague and friend, Pastor Michael Maiden, serves as a pastor. So uh, I'm glad I, 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 that answered the question. <laughs> but, uh, but even though she was not a past uh, member here officially, she certainly was in spirit. Yes. 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 In spirit and, more, and in love in more ways than some of the members. I hate to say that. <laughs> she, was, uh, she was, that's who she was. I want to read from John, the fourth chapter, verses 14 to 15. This morning, as I was seeking the Lord on how I could offer words to honor her life from the Word of God, the Lord sent me, uh, this was not the first passage he sent me to, but you'll find out as I come to a close how he shifted me to this passage. In John, the fourth chapter, beginning with the fourth verse, reading through verse 15 in the New Living Translation, it reads like this. He had to go through Samaria on the way, talking about Jesus. Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with the Samaritans. She said to Jesus, You are Jew, and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who I am, you would ask me and I would give you living water. Mm -hmm. But sir, you don't even have a rope or a bucket, she said. And this is a very deep well. Where would you get this living water? And besides, are you greater than our ancestor Jacob? gave us this well, how could you offer better water than he and his sons and his cattle in Job? <laughs> Jesus replied, people soon become thirsty again after drinking this water. But the water I give you, give them, takes away thirst altogether. Amen. It becomes a perpetual spring within Amen. them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me some of that water, and I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to haul one. I want us to see Marie reflected in the woman at the well, in that, in that great, in that encounter of one woman with her, with our Lord Jesus Christ. I saw several things in this particular text. First of all, like the Samaritan woman who met Jesus Christ at the well at noontime, Marie was a woman who knew that there are essential, there are essentials for life and that water is one of them. Mm -hmm. She knew that there are some things that are, that are not optional in life. That there are some things that are essential, some things that are fundamental for, for a person to live and survive in this life, and of course, naturally, one of those was water. And I believe as a child, as a young person, as an adult, as a mother, as a grandmother, as a, as a vibrant, a senior citizen helper, that Marie appreciated the life-giving attribute of what's fundamental for life at its best, whether that fundamental aspect is God, family, church, relationships, nursing, FIBCO, starting a nonprofit. Whatever it is, whatever it was, what Marie concentrated her life on <coughs> and 
what was important to her was not the accessories of life, hmm. not the things that we could do without. Like the woman at the well who came and knew that she needed water in order to live, Marie knew that there were some things in life that are fundamental that you cannot live without. Right. And that was of certainly love and sharing and caring and all that. So she knew, she like the woman at the well, knew that which was, which is fundamental in life. But the second thing I see reflected in this text like the Samaritan woman, Marie had the privilege on a regular basis to honor our Lord's this directive to her. Please give me a drink of water. Jesus was tired and weary beside the well. The woman came up. Jesus didn't know her. Well, he did know her. He was God in the flesh. But she didn't know him. And he directed her, please give me a drink of water. And you may be asking, well, when did she do that? When did Marie give Jesus a drink of water? Well, it's in the Bible, too, in Matthew, the 25th chapter, yeah. verses 37 through 40, when Jesus talks about how it's going to be yeah. when we stand before the king and yes, he's going to yes. divide people on the right and the left, those who are righteous, those who are unrighteous. And he concludes in the, in the 37 through the 40 verse of these words. He said, then the righteous, those who he will send on to their reward, then the righteous will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry? When did we ever feed you? Or, or when did we see you thirsty and give you something to drink? Or, right. or a stranger and show you hospitality? Or naked and give you anything? Give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick? Right. Or in prison and visit you? Yeah. And the king of glory will tell them, I assure you, hmm. when you did it, one of the least yeah, of these, like yeah. my brothers and sisters, yeah. you were doing it unto me. Mm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answer from Jesus Christ himself satisfies you about our beloved Marie. She knew the fundamentals of life, and she honored Jesus' request when he said, give me a drink of water. And every time she gave us some of that new day food, every time she called you and ministered to you, every time uh, she, she and that cat got along like they did, every time she did anything to any one of us in here and countless other people, every time she changed the sort of clothing of people who were patients, every time she picked up after somebody, Marie was giving Jesus a drink of water. So we have no doubt that she will be on the right hand when the Lord divides True. up this world. But third, like the woman at the well, Jesus Christ offered Marie living water. Yes, sir. He didn't just he didn't just say, please give me a drink of water. Hmm. After they had a little interchange in the conversation, he offered her living water, the water that only he could give. And when the Samaritan woman raised the question, where, where would you get this living water? You ain't got nothing to carry the water in. You ain't got a bucket. You ain't got a rope. This is a deep well. Where are you going to get some water right, to, right, to, right. To, to, to give me? How can you offer me better water than Jacob and his sons and his cattle enjoyed from this well? And then that's when he replied to both the woman of Samaria and I believe he replied to Marie, people soon become thirsty again after drinking this water. From this well, the water I give them takes away thirst altogether and it becomes a perpetual spring within them, giving them eternal life. Listen to the Samaritan woman's response. Please, sir, give me some of that water. Then I'll never be thirsty again. That's how Marie Davis through and through. Her life lived. Please, Jesus, give me some of that water so that I will never thirst from spiritual thirst again. When Jesus offered her his living water, she accepted it and drank from it for the rest of her life. Yes. 
Well, that brings me to the final and last reflection that I see in this text in the life of Marie in light of John 4, 4 through 15. Sister Marie's middle name, I believe, I don't know if this was Fontaine, am I correct? Yeah. Sister Marie's middle name was Fontaine. Fontaine is a French word for fountain. Come on now, Pastor. A natural spring. Come on now, Pastor. Fontaine is a French word for fountain. A natural spring. That's why Sister Marie Fontaine Davis was so full of life and love and compassion and joy and, and encouragement and help and service to others. Within her was a fountain yes, yes, yes. of living water yes, yes, yes. from her Lord Jesus Christ. And we read that throughout her obituary, but not only we don't have to read that, those of us who knew her, yes, that's right. we also knew and loved her family and friends and FITCO and neighbors and church members and others. We experienced and we were refreshed every time we were in her presence. Yes. Yes. As Jesus Christ spoke to that woman at the well, he also spoke to Marie. It becomes a perpetual spring within, giving you eternal life. Marie Fontaine mm -hmm. Davis mm -hmm. was a fountain of eternal living yes, yes, yes. of the Lord himself. Marie Fontaine Davis was a fountain of eternal living from the Lord Jesus himself. And you too they had that living one. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 He offers it to every one of you. Amen. He's in here today. Yes, yes. You want a water from which some water from which you will never thirst. And it will always be an eternal fountain in you. Jesus said, I am that living one. Let us pray. God, we thank you. Mm -hmm. My beloved sister Marie Fontaine. Thank you that she lived up to her relationship with you because of your grace and your love and your mercy. We thank you that she was a wonderful daughter, sister, aunt, cousin, grandmother, mother, friend, co worker, fellow Christian. Thank you, God. She met you one day. And you offered her living word. And she accepted. And since she accepted, she's been passing out that one every day of her life. <coughs> trying to bring refreshment, trying to bring life to those who are parched by dry desert spiritual situations in all of our lives. She brought refreshment. She did it through simple things. Not complicated things. Just trying to help people do the basic things better. Yes. So God, we no longer have to pray for her. She's with you, God. We, we certainly would not have put this on our schedule. But you're God. Yes, yes. And you're her Savior. And you know best. Mm -hmm. So God, we pray for Mother Mary, siblings, and all the rest of us. We pray that we can move on from here with thanksgiving for her life. Mm -hmm. Knowing that we still, though she's not here, access to that living one, that fountain, that eternal spring that never runs dry. Yes, yes. Thank you. And one day somebody already has suggested or indicated when we get over on the other side, yes. those of us who believe in you. Yes, yes. She 
probably be standing there by the river. Runs through the center of heaven. Bringing life for the healing of the nations. So until that time, keep us in your care. We thank you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let us all say together, Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing. What do you say to sing that closing song? You sing the land down. When we all get to heaven. You know it? When we all get to heaven.